Before I get started on today's video, I want to just say thank you guys so much, so, so very much. The Mommy Elf Herself deck has over 1,500 views. It's the most viewed video on my channel, so thank you guys so much for that. It means a lot to me, but let's keep up the support because today, I gave her an upgrade. I gave her a really bad needed upgrade because I started playing with this like a month ago and I started to see a little bit of flaws in it. So I decided to give her an upgrade and I think you guys would really appreciate it. So if you really like it, please make sure to go down in the comments below, share your favorite commander. If you really like the upgrades, what you'd upgrade to the deck. And I'm also gonna be putting the upgraded deck list in the comment, well in the, uh, just down below. So if you guys wanna go check it out, Please make sure, and while you're down there, please make sure to like and subscribe. It means a lot to me. Let's get on to the upgrades that I gave her. So, for starters, I just got rid of Casualties of War. Casualties of War is, I think, just way too slow for this. You're going to see a theme in uh, in these upgrades. Casualties of War, way too slow. But, Immoreal Elfheim Elite is really good, really efficient. You can assign its combat damage as though it weren't blocked. I think that's really, really great, especially because whenever it attacks, it gets stronger for every elf you control, which really great. It's going to be really big, really strong, and they're going to have to waste resources in order to kill this while you're just dealing the damage anyway. And I think Casualties of War is just way too slow of a removal spell. Only gets rid of an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, a land, and a planeswalker. I think that's way too way too slow for six mana i would rather be doing other things with my time uh court of calling i know i know it's a staple especially in elf decks with being able to convoke and all that i know but i just i just think you i doubt you'll need it in this deck i think it has enough card draw i think it has enough uh, card advantage in it i don't think you'll be needing to search it up also because i am going to be getting rid of end race forerunners obviously crater hoof behemoth is really really good but that's why you have stuff like natural order in it you have i'm um, adding a uh, demonic tutor in it but tavar jubilant brawler i just think it's really really good you can activate abilities of creatures you control as though those creatures had haste so that means you can get out uh, lothril be able to use your ability immediately if you have enough creatures uh, well, if you have enough elves, also being able to untap tar uh, up to one target creature, I think is really good. It uh, provides a lot of, like, flexibility with mana and all that. Also being able to return a creature card with mana value two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. I think that's going to be really, really cool as well. I just think this deck needs a lot more efficiency, a lot of, like, haste enablers. It's it's an aggro elf deck. It Elves need to be aggressive, and I think that Tyvar really helps with that. Uh, the Great Henge, I know, I know, you're also thinking that that's also a staple, but I think because elves won't necessarily have the biggest power, I think it'd be beneficial to just get rid of it because you're going to be paying a lot of mana for it. I know it gives plus, a 1-1 one -one counters and card draw as well with it, but I just think Glissa Sunslayer is a little more efficient because at 3 mana, it's a 3-3 three, three first strike death touch, which is already really good, but whenever it deals combat damage to a player, meaning people are going to want to block this but they're going to have to kill a creature for it they're going to have to kill a, a, a really big creature for that fact they're going to need first strike or double strike in order to kill it and that's not very common nowadays but it can uh, make you draw a card and lose a life uh, destroy an enchantment or remove up to three counters from target permanent uh, i think that's going to be really good especially from nowadays meta with uh, there could be a lot of oil counters going around all that i just think this would be really really good i and it's also an elf, so, yeah. Uh, Moldervite Reclamation is also a, an elf staple, but Skemfar Avenger, I think, does does it better, because you don't actually need to pay, what is that, three more life to basically make it so that uh, you just gain a life instead of losing a life. I think the efficiency of being able to have a two drop, that whenever something dies, you draw a card and lose a life, while an elf uh, dies, you lose a life, and draw a card, I think that's a lot more efficient, and as a 3-1, it can also be a beater if you don't need the extra card draw, little card advantage, so I just think it's a lot more efficient, I think it's a lot, since it's a lot cheaper, you can get a lot easier and not have to spend 5 mana on an enchantment that could be removed fairly easily. People are going to be a lot more hesitant to get rid of this, and it's going to give you card advantage anyway. Uh, Elvish Visionary, uh, again, I know, this is a staple, but Heritage Druid is a lot bigger of a staple. I don't know why I didn't put this in before, but one green, you could just tap three untapped elves you control and add three green to your mana pool. I think that's a lot better, especially because Lothril gives you just elf warriors that 
don't really do much. So why not turn those into more mana so you can spend more stuff, pay more stuff, whatever. Because uh, Elvish Visionary is just a one for one. You pay two, you get one, one elf, and you draw a card for it. So it replaces itself, but I just think the mana would be a lot more efficient. Uh, I'll let you guys know if this deck has too much ramp and not as many payoffs, but you never know. So, move on to Arcane Signet. Um, is, I know, a staple. Everybody runs Arcane Signet because they have to at this point. Arcane Signet's really, really good, but Gnarl Root, Gnarl Root Trapper is, I think, way more way more efficient. It allows you to, if you have a turn one, just like Swamp or something, you can then tap for green mana, it, so it kind of color fixes. It, you can only spend it on elf creature spells, which it does kind of suck, but also you're going to be spending it on elves anyway. But also target attacking elf you control gains death touch until end of turn. I think that just pushes it a little farther than Arcane Signet. I think this card is really, really good, uh, especially because you want the consistency. And Arcane Signet also just doesn't give you that elf keyword, basically. And that's what you want to look for in this deck because you're running aggressive. So if you don't need to give something death touch or add green to your mana pool, you could just run this as a creature. Uh, Wellwisher, you can tap it to add one life for each elf on the battlefield. Uh, you don't need life in this match. You're running aggressive. You're you're being aggro. So instead of making life, why don't we make a lot of your stuff be able to tap for mana? So uh, Draga Tree Speaker, this is the only card that I'm subbing out that I'm like, oh, I don't know. You could run it either way. It's just what I'm choosing to do. Uh, you can level it up, and once it has five a uh, five up uh, levels. Elves you control have tap add gr green green to your mana pool, but you can also basically a three mana one two with tap add green green to your mana pool. Uh, just being able to one green put out the elf already, just quick efficient turn one, turn two being able to uh, allow you to if you play a land out then then you have two mana at, at your disposal because you can then tap this. Uh, I mean, I just think it's a really good turn one to turn two play. And as it get, goes on and on, if they don't get rid of this, a lot of your elves are then able to tap for mana. Uh, Essence Warden, I know this, this is a staple. Everybody loves Essence Warden. Being able to, creatures entering, you gain life. I just think Demonic Tutor is a tutor, and it's really, really good. So I think this is going to be a lot better just overall. So I think being able to search library for a card and put the card in your hand is a lot more efficient. And I think it's just... A better card in general i obviously essence warden is a staple demonic tutor is a staple so you'll have to get rid of a staple here or there but i just think demonic tutor is just way better especially in this aggressive de kind of deck pack to the serpent i know it draw it can draw you a lot of card make you lose a lot of life or x the number of creatures that control of the chosen type i know you it's it's a very big card advantage but I noticed that there's not a lot of removal, especially artifact and enchantment removal. So nature's claim, big staple. I don't think anybody's going to complain that just one green mana removal spell for artifacts and enchantments. I don't think people are going to complain too much about it. I just think, I think this is a pretty decent trade, especially because Pact of the Serpent can net you loss of life in general. While it does give you card advantage, I just think it'd be a lot better to just remove an artifact or enchantment when in doubt, because you only have a few of them. So you'll need another one abomination of lanoir uh while it is a pretty decent card in elf elf decks i just think the free deadly rollick uh removal spell the exile spell is a lot better especially because you're just gonna want to just throw it out get rid of a the biggest threat abomination is is a pretty good card especially because it gets really big and has vigilance and menace i think it is a really good card but I think we have enough creatures in the deck, and just having a one-hit wonder in this isn't going to be good enough. I would rather get rid of their biggest creature instead. Uh, Door of Destinies, uh, creatures get bigger the more... Uh, so your elves get bigger the more elves uh, you cast. It is a good card, and I can see people running this in elves. But Benefactor's Drought, I've never seen this until now, but... Two mana, untap all creatures, and until end of turn, whenever a creature an opponent controls blocks, draw a card, uh, and draw a card as well. So it replaces itself as a cantrip, you untap all your creatures, this is just a lot of value. I think Door of Destiny is a little too slow at four mana, so I would rather just have value over something that you'll have to play and then hope that it pays off. Because it also just get dies to removal, but it instant, 
really, really good. Uh, Vanquisher's Banner, while everybody loves Vanquisher's Banner, I think the Serpent Soul Jar would be a lot better in this. Uh, in this, I initially got rid of it because it was in the pre-con, but I think it's actually really, really good, more than I think about it. Because just giving yourself plus one, plus one, okay, it's like a Lord. But also, cast a creature spell of the chosen type, you draw a card as well. It, it's good, but at five mana, if this was at four mana, I, I would never think about getting rid of this. But since it's at five mana, I think it's a little too slow. Uh, but Serpent Soul Jar is whenever an elf you control dies, exile it. You're you're only so I only replace one card with a reanimate, which I'll get to in a second. But I think that you won't really care about getting things back from the graveyard. So I would rather have them exile, and then you could tap and pay two life, and until end of turn, make cast creature spells from among cards exiled with this, which is really really good because the more elves uh, they kill, the more eventually you can just get the elves back and. Especially if you have the the Tavar out, you can then cast them to be, be able to tap them to cast more of the elves. This is basically just an insurance policy. It's a really good insurance policy. I think this card is really, really good. Uh, Putrefy. I know I said that we don't have much artifact uh, well, and just removal in general. But I think three mana is just a little too expensive. Uh, there's We have other removal spells for that. And for three mana, I think it's just a little... Little, little too inefficient but quest of renewal is really really good because eventually so stuff becomes tapped well you're gonna be tapping your mana dorks anyway uh and as long as there's four or more qu uh quest counters on it untap all creatures you control during each other player's untap step so it gives your stuff vigilance allows you to cast more instants and things it's really really good trust me it's it will work because it, even just giving yourself vigilance or being able to tap your Lothril to then be able to tap your elf warriors to deal opponent's life and you gain life from that uh, and then be able to just untap them and do the same thing on other people's turns. I think this is really good uh, because I was going to add Seedborn Muse to it, but I think that since it's not an elf, I think it's it'll hurt the deck slightly more. But since this is an enchantment, it's basically always going to stay. And tapping your creatures is nothing. Being able to just tap four creatures and then you get this is nothing, especially in this deck. But yeah, like I said before, End Race Form Runners, we're getting rid of it. I know, I know. It's like Crater Hoof Behemoth, but it only gives plus two, plus two, Vigilance and Trample. Eight mana, I could see you getting this, but I would rather have Alpha Authority. I figured this out. Um, Alpha Authority is just really, really good. I'm pretty sure Lothril has Menace, if I remember correctly. And turns out with Alpha Authority, it basically gives your Lothril unblockable. Um, also, it has Hexproof. Unblockable and Hexproof is really, really good. Because people can't get rid of it unless they're, they have a board wipe. And that's what Serpent Soul Jar is for. And when in doubt, being able to just pump out a bunch more elves with uh, swinging with Lothril... I think it's really good. I think it's um, a lot better than just having a big finisher because you already have Crater Hoof Behemoth for it. We have a lot more ways to get Crater Hoof Behemoth anyway um, with the reanimate, the uh, demonic tutor, with the natural order, all that. Uh, it's just way easier, way easier to get, and I think this could probably bog down your hand very easily. It is a big finisher, but I'd rather have Alpha Authority for the consistency. Uh, Wolverine Riders, I just think is really, really slow for six mana, just being able to get a 1-1 uh, every every turn, whatever, every person's turn, and being able to gain life. You don't really care about gaining life, but just getting an elf every turn, uh, it's a little slow, especially because you're probably popping this down turn probably four or something. I just think it's a little too slow. I'd rather have a consistent cantrip-like removal spell with Kendra's Transformation, uh, Kenrith's transformation, um, turning into a 3-3 that loses all abilities, and this enters and draw a card. Enchantment removal is really hard to do. Uh, get, getting rid of one of their really, just really good creatures, but also being able to replace this with a draw spell, I think this is really good. I I just think it's really, really good. That's why I upgraded it. Uh, Shaman of the Pact, I just think is a little too inefficient, because you have N Nissa Ravain, which basically makes it so that this is a one-shot uh, for one person, but it only gives target opponent loses life equal to the number of elves you control. So I think it's, again, just a little too slow. I think just being able to take out one opponent would be a little too weak for this. I'd rather throw in a Lanoir Elves just for the consistency because you already have an Elvish Mystic and a Finhorn Elves, so why not get the consistency of having all three of the one-mana mana dorks? 
Uh, Ruthless Widowmore, again, a little too expensive. Five mana for 4-4 four, four elf. It's really slow, but uh, beginning with each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a non-elf creature. I just think that's really slow because you're getting rid of one uh, one creature each turn. Uh, it's just it's just really slow. I would rather have Lightning Greaves, which gives stuff haste and shroud, meaning you can then get more of the uh, more of your mana dorks. Uh, you can just throw this out and give Lothril haste and shroud. I mean, it's Lightning Greaves is a really good card. I don't know why I didn't have this in there before, but Lightning Greaves, really good card. I don't think anybody will com complain about adding it in the deck. Kindred Dominance, again, it's seven mana. It is a board wife of everything but elves. It is a good finisher, but if somebody else is running elves, or like any elves, I think this just isn't good enough. I would rather have the consistency of reanimate as an insurance policy, because people are going to run removal spells, so why not be able to just quickly reanimate it, run the board that way, get a lord out or something. It's... It's like a board wipe without being a board wipe, especially if you get, like, a lord or something. Uh, yeah, reanimation is a really good card. It's really efficient. It's great. Uh, not only stuff like lands and stuff. Uh, Skimfar, Skimfar Elder Hall, I don't care. It enters tapped. No, Nobody can convince me that this card is good whatsoever. Uh, I don't know why I added this in the deck. I thought that, like, maybe you could play this, like, turn one, whatever, and it does stuff, whatever. doesn't matter. Growing Rites of Itlamok is gives you creature card advantage, uh, whatever, and then eventually turns into a uh, Gaia's Cradle on the other side of it. That's just way too efficient, way too mana efficient. I would much rather much rather have a, a Gaia's Cradle out than having this that enters tapped. Uh, and replace the swamp with Shizo Death Storehouse because we're making our lands more efficient and it's basically the same thing. It can tap for black, but it'll also give something fear to land a turn, so give that to your, uh, uh, what is it? Give that to your Lothril, give it to, uh, one of your big beaters. I really don't care. It's efficient and it just replaces the swamp anyway. Uh, swamp also for Lanoir Waste because it can also tap for green. It does deal a damage to you, but it doesn't really matter because... We're running, apparently, a lot more green than black. So we need more efficient just getting out green. We are still running quite a few swamps and forests. But getting rid of some of the uh, some of the swamps for stuff that can tap for, you know, better, more efficient mana, I think it's a lot, a lot easier. Such as adding a Gaia's Cradle, because we're upgrading the deck. So why not just throw in a Gaia's Cradle? We're not caring about money nowadays, so why not just... Gaia's Cradle. Everybody knows this. Nobody would care about adding this to it. If you don't want to run a Gaia's Cradle, I wouldn't really care, but I would highly advise getting it or proxying it, whatever. Gaia's Cradle is just way too good. Um, replacing a forest with Nurturing Peatland, it's like the card that we said before, except uh, you can pay one to have it sacrifice it and draw a card. When in doubt, if you have more, uh, too many lands, you can just get, get a new card. So, But it also mana fixes a lot easier, so... Uh, also, a forest for Overgrown Tomb, because Overgrown Tomb is broken. I love Overgrown Tomb. Uh, it's one of my favorite shock lands, but yeah, shock land, good, efficient. Also, if we're running a guy's cradle, might as well run a bayou, because it's really, really good. And placing a swamp, well, forest for a swamp forest for free, I mean, it's duh, whatever. But. Uh, those are all of my uh, those are all my upgrades for the deck. If you guys liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Also, comment down below if you guys like the upgrades for it, what you'd upgrade to it. While you're down there, check out the upgraded deck list. Uh, also, like and subscribe, like I said. And thank you guys so much for for watching this. And thank you guys so much for all the support. And I'll see you guys in the next deck tech.